all right hello guys today in this video we'll be discussing about jaundice first to the definition jaundice means the yellowish discoloration of the mucous membrane the sclera and the skin but if you're only talking about the sclera then we call it as icterus this is due to abnormal deposition of bilirubin in this tissues and one thing to remember is that jaundice is not a disease okay it's just a manifestation of an underlying disease process it is a symptom is this jaundice now in this figure picture you can appreciate that the palms of her hand has turned yellow but her sclera is normal or looking white this is not a jaundice but something what we call as carotinoderma this happens when you eat lots of uh, foods uh, containing ca beta carotene such as carrots uh, or sweet potatoes etc etc hyperbilirubinemia means the elevated uh, levels of bilirubin in blood the normal uh, level of total serum bilirubin is between 0.1 to 1 mg per dl and if it increases then we call it as hyperbilirubinemia Bilirubin are mainly two types, unconjugated bilirubin, which is indirect fraction in Vandenberg reaction and conjugated bilirubin with direct fraction in Vandenberg reaction. And based on this, we have classified hyperbilirubinemia as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, where the level of unconjugated bilirubin is increased, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, where the level of conjugated bilirubin is increased and the mixed type both of them are increased now about the bilirubin it is a colored compound which is yellow in color and chemically it is a linear tetrapyrrole now just to make you understand better this is a pyrrole ring now if we combine four of them in a linear pattern we get bilirubin bilirubin is a terminal or end product of a metabolic pathway and that pathway is the breakdown of him him is a protein sorry him we obtain from hemoglobin so if you break down hemoglobin we get him and if we break down him we get bilirubin which is excreted in many other forms in feces and urine the daily production of hemoglobin is between 250 to 300 mg but it is uh, two to three times more in case of neonates this picture shows the pathway of heme breakdown we can obtain 75 percent of heme are obtained from the catabolism of rbcs and 25 percent from other sources such as liver tissue heme heme proteins such as hemoglobin myoglobin cytochromes <coughs> catalases etc and also from bone marrow when there is ineffective erythropoiesis heme is broken down by heme oxygenase into biliverdin which is a green bile pigment which is further broken down into bilirubin by biliverdin reductase the cellular location of this pathway is in the reticulous endothelial system in the macrophages actually in the macrophages of the reticular endothelial system that is spleen and the liver and the subcellular location in the macrophages is endoplasmic reticulum which contains hemoxygenase enzyme and the cytosol which contains bilivardin reductase enzyme now this chart shows the production of uh, formation of unconjugated bilirubin from the rbc's now the difference between the unconjugated and the conjugated bilirubin is unconjugated bilirubin is present in higher amount as compared to the conjugated bilirubin it is generally up to 1 mg per dl whereas conjugated bilirubin should be less than 0.3 mg per dl normally unconjugated bilirubin is in has indirect fraction in vandenberg reaction and conjugated bilirubin has direct fraction Unconjugated bilirubin is insoluble in water, whereas conjugated one is soluble in water. Now, to remember, uh, to make you easier to remember, you can remember on and in. In case of unconjugated bilirubin, okay, on, in, and con, di, okay. If you get confused, which one is indirect and which one is direct, so we can remember as on, in, and con, di, and here is also in in insoluble, so. You can remember this you know it's and another is soluble now in the transport of unconjugated bilirubin in blood 
it is due to uh, through solubilization of unconjugated bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin is bounded to albumin uh, by non-covalent bonding which is reversible because it has to be delivered to the liver so here we have formed uh, unconjugated bilirubin and this is now combined with uh, albumin in the blood and for uh, albumin unconjugated bilirubin complex is taken into the liver so now we have bilirubin metabolism in case in hepatocytes it is in four steps I will not read all of this but I'll explain them one by one first one is hepatic uptake of unconjugated bilirubin now the liver takes unconjugated bilirubin in two different ways first one is simple diffusional process and another is using a membrane transporter called bilitranslocase so here in this picture this is a sinusoid and these are the cells lining the sinusoid this is space of DC and this is a hepatocyte so we have here albumin unconjugated bilirubin complex coming from the reticular endothelial system through the blood and this will be taken inside uh, this to the space of TC where they will dissociate and unconjugated bilirubin will go inside the hepatocyte through first one uh, that is uh, by the simple diffusional process and another one is through this transporter known as bilitranslocase and in the second step we have intracellular binding of unconjugated bilirubin so unconjugated bilirubin will bind to glutathione as transferases and there are many three reasons behind it first one is to reduce the efflux of bilirubin back to blood second one to present bilirubin for conjugation another is to keep bilirubin in aqueous environment of the cytosol okay so unconjugated bilirubin will be bind binded to glutathione as transferases so this will prevent the backflow of unconjugated bilirubin into the space of tc and next step we have conjugation of unconjugated bilirubin so bilirubin can be conjugated with one or two glucuronic acid if it is conjugated with one we call it as bilirubin monoglucuronide and if it's conjugated with two glucuronic acid we call it as bilirubin diglucuronate and the enzyme which performs this function is known as UDP glucuronosyl transferase or UZT1A1 we can also call it as uridine diphosphate glucuronosyl transferase which is located in endoplasmic reticulum of hepatocytes so here as unconjugated bilirubin is inside the hepatocyte now this is acted upon by UGT1A1 enzyme to form bilirubin monoglucuronide and if it is again combined uh, and if the glucuronic acid uh, again combines with it then it forms bilirubin diglucuronide okay and the next step is biliary excretion of the conjugated bilirubin so we have uh, Two conjugated bilirubin here bilirubin monoglucuronide and bilirubin diglucuronide this uh, conjugated bilirubins will be taken out from the hepatocyte into the bile canaliculus this is a bile canaliculus by a protein called MRP2 which is multi-drug resistance associated protein so this protein is responsible for passing out uh, conjugated bilirubin into the bile canaliculus so we have almost completed the chart here you can see the unconjugated bilirubin and albumin complex are taken into the liver where it is acted upon by the UGT1A1 uh, enzyme to form conjugated bilirubin and now this conjugated bilirubin through the bile canaliculus will reach the uh, small intestine by space ampulla of Peter now bilirubin metabolism in gut bilirubin glucuronides it will pass unchanged through the proximal small intestine and then it will get hydrolyzed to deconjugated bilirubin by bacterial glucuronide glucuronidases in distal ileum and colon and it will further get reduced to uh, to urobilinosin by normal gut bacteria so this is the complete chart here 
the final product is urobilinosin which will uh, the 80 percent of the urobilinosin will be converted to stercobilin and be excreted uh, through feces which gives feces its brown color and the remaining 20 percent out of this 20 percent 90 percent uh, will be taken by the liver for uh, as enterohepatic circulation and 10 percent will escape the hepatic uptake and and reach to kidney glomerulus where they will be uh, excreted as urebilin which gives uh, yellow color to the urine now the major causes of jaundice are the hyperbilirubinemia we have three major uh, types of jaundice hemolytic jaundice hepatocellular jaundice and the obstructive jaundice in hemolytic jaundice there is massive breakdown of rbc's and the causes are autoimmune where the body's uh, antibodies where the body creates antibodies which will destroy the rbc's and in abnormal hemoglobin we have sickle cell anemia and thalassemia where huge number of rbc's are broken down in the spleen in the hepatocellular jaundice viral hepatitis <coughs> can lead to hepatocellular jaundice drugs such as paracetamol alcohol and here we have something called as isolated hyperbilirubinemia where the level of bilirubin are increased with no other abnormality in other laboratory parameters okay so the and the causes of isolated hyperbilirubinemia are inherited causes and physiologic causes under inherited causes we have gilbert syndrome krigler nahar syndrome Duvin Johnson syndrome and rotor syndrome. In the obstructive jaundice, there is intrahepatic biliary tract blockage, which might be due to uh, drugs such as nitrofurantoin or anabolic steroids or other antipsychotic drugs, primary biliary cirrhosis, cholangitis, the inflammation of the bile duct, we have, and also another is extrahepatic biliary tract blockage, which can be due to gallstones, pancreatic tumors or cholangiocarcinoma and in the blood test the total bilirubin is obviously high in uh, all three types of jaundices in hemolytic jaundice there is increased production of the unconjugated bilirubin so <coughs> the level of unconjugated bilirubin will be high in hemolytic jaundice and level of conjugated bilirubin will be low in case of hepatocellular jaundice all of these are increased and in obstructive jaundice the uh, the, con the formed conjugated bilirubin cannot be passed into the small intestine so they will accumulate and lead to jaundice that's what we, so the level of conjugated bilirubin will be increased whereas the unconjugated bilirubin will be low And the classification of hyperbilirubinemia is based on the laboratory tests we have two types isolated hyperbilirubinemia and hyperbilirubinemia associated with other laboratory abnormalities but in this video i'm just going to be discussing about the isolated hyperbilirubinemia now the causes of isolated hyperbilirubinemia i've already explained in this table so these are the causes of isolated hyperbilirubinemia i'm going to explain them now first is the physiologic neonatal jaundice this is due to uh, the immature neonatal liver okay the liver of the neonate is not mature enough to excrete the bilirubin because it has low level of ugt 1a1 so the level of unconjugated bilirubin increase which is known as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and this is seen uh, seen within two to five days of birth and, de and decreases to normal level within two weeks it can be treated by phototherapy and under inherited cause we have Gilbert syndrome <coughs> where the function of uct 1a1 enzyme is decreased by 10 to 33 percent of the normal and this is due to mutation of uct 1a1 mm, enzyme there is increase in unconjugated bilirubin so unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia normally the total serum bilirubin is usually less than 
for mg per dl and the liver function test is normal bilirubin level decreases to normal with phenobarbital we have normal liver histology with no coronic terrace next one is krigler nahar syndrome this one is a little bit severe because there is markedly reduced or completely absence of ugt 101 activity and this is autosomal in, uh, recessive inheritance as compared to Gilbert syndrome which can be both autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant there are two types of krigler nahar syndrome type 1 and type 2 type 1 is uh, the severe one because the function of ugt 101 is almost zero whereas uh, in krigler nahar type 2 there is um, up to 10% of the uh, UGT-1A1 enzymes are functioning so it's moder it's moderate to severe in type 1 the serum bilirubin can range from 18 to 45 mg per dl whereas in type 2 serum bilirubin lies between 6 to 25 mg per dl another one is dubin johnson syndrome it is mild isolated predominantly conjugated hyperbilirubinemia now conjugated because there is increase in the level of the conjugated bilirubin the all the enzymes responsible for conjugating bilirubin uh, conjugating the unconjugated bilirubin are normal but there is defect in mrp2 protein the protein responsible for uh, passing out conjugated bilirubin into the bile canaliculus from the hepatocytes and this is due to abcca gene The rotor syndrome is also uh, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia with defect in OATP1B1 or OATP1B3. This is due to a mutation in SLCOB1, SLCO1B3. These are the genes which code for this protein. Thank you.